guys? This is your girl Madeline Berry here with Gloriatic Chronicles. I'm back again to talk about the kingdom of God. Hope you are well. Uh, last week, started with the introduction. Um, we started off in Romans 14, 17, where I talked about the kingdom of, of God is, uh, is not meat or eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And um, if you haven't watched the introduction, please go and watch that, just so you can kind of see where I'm going to be going with this uh, as the Lord leads me. And um, so this week, we're going to just start talking about righteousness. And um, the righteousness of God is, 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 a, is an amazing topic because I just, I mean, there is no way that we can earn righteousness. Jesus had to come and die for us on our behalf because um, the nature of, of man after the fall of Adam and his wife um, was that it was just not going to be able to happen because it was a sinful existence, a sinful lineage. And, and um, God had already set up the backup plan, the, the, the savior plan, and he just kicked it into to gear when it was time for, for Jesus to, to come and take our sin. And so um, I think it's amazing that um, one of the things that I, I've, I've come across in studying righteousness and in just thinking about this for the last several months, um, as I've been kind of thinking over it and preparing in my heart and my mind, um, how I'm going to share righteousness with you and just allowing Holy Spirit to breathe on it. Um, one of the things that have really uh, just kind of jumped out at me, I was listening to uh, an, an amazing Bible teacher who I, who I love and listen to frequently. Um, and one day he was just reading some different verses and he highlighted one verse that had been kind of pulled out of context and used and misused uh, abundantly in the body of Christ. And I'm going to share that with you right now. Um, turn uh, Open your Bibles up to uh, Romans 3. Now, I told you about Romans. Romans is the book of righteousness. And if, you, um, if you've been reading it, you'll see the amazing sacrifice and what we got in exchange when Jesus um, took our sins and what he gave us in return. Uh, essentially, he gave us uh, everything that he had. He has all authority. Um, then he gave us back what Adam lost when, when he fell in the garden. And so he's been, he's basically restored back to us what the first Adam lost. In addition to that, he gave us access to, uh, the kingdom of, of God and the kingdom of heaven to be able to be released in us and through us. So now instead of us trying to find a garden uh, on earth somewhere to, to, you know, to come and find a garden of Eden where we can come to. He actually installed the garden of, he of Eden inside of us. The garden lives inside of us because all, all of, of, of the heaven is basically contained inside of him who is contained inside of us by his will. He chooses to live inside of us. And so I think that's amazing. So if you open your Bibles to Romans 3, um, I'm going to start with a verse that um, I feel like has just really been um, misused uh, abundantly in the body of Christ. And it has had a, a bad effect in the, in the sense that um, the body of Christ has not been free to, to embrace the righteousness that Jesus died to give us. So uh, Romans 3.23, I'm going to be reading this one from the New Living Translation because I really like the way this whole little section reads. Now, first of all, if you're reading it from another translation like a King James Version or New, uh, New King James Version, um, verses 21 through 26 are like one big paragraph. However, somehow we as as the body have, have pinpointed verse 23 to just kind of use it as a platform. So in the New Living Translation, it says, for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard, which is very true. It is absolutely true. When we came into this world, we were sinners by birth. 
it was nothing we could do about it except when we had the opportunity to receive Jesus as our Lord to then exchange with him our sin and the whole life of sin that we could live for his righteousness so that when God would look at us we could be made righteous well if you remember going out with evangelistic teams um, you may have seen some tracks and it was called Romans Road to Salvation and the very first scripture on the track was Romans 3.23. It's a basic, um, like a bullet <laughs> to let you know, hey, you are a sinner. <laughs> you are a sinner. Now, that whole little section is talking about how, the whole chapter, actually, the whole chapter of Romans 3 is talking about how Jesus has made us righteous. God has made us righteous through Jesus and his sacrifice. And it's a trip. I am, it's a trip because, I, I mean, I am, I'm understanding this more and more as I um, live my life. Um, because of the background that I have in the Word, how my mom taught me faith and, and how to read the Word and how to love the Word, um, and then going to different churches that teach the Word with simplicity and understanding, um, I mean, just, you know, breaking it down and, and helping us understand one of the things that, that is the foundation of our lives is faith. And in Romans, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And what that means is it is impossible for you to have faith for something that you have not heard. Which is why, you know, uh, on, a, on an extreme end of it, um, if you get this idea and a vision from God to do something that no one has ever seen or done before, you might be the first one in your family to, to kind of step out and do something different because, because they've never experienced it or seen it in their own lives or in the lives of anybody they know, they're going to reject it because they don't have faith for it. They've never seen it. They've never heard it. They never imagined that it could happen. And so just by you stepping out and then proving to them that it's possible, then they have faith for it. So faith comes by hearing, also by seeing the example of others or whatever. But um, if you are not taught something and shown how it works, you will not have faith for it. You will not be able to believe for it. Like if I went to a church and they didn't teach that um, being baptized with Holy Spirit was, was for now, um, I would, whenever I encountered somebody, I would have an automatic opinion about shouldn't be praying in tongues because that's maybe from the devil or however it would be taught, right? Versus, um, being taught that, you know, it's quite all right or being shown it in the word or being led to it or through it by watching or listening to someone teach. Look, this is actually the way ministry is done, you know? So, um, the same is true for a scripture that could get pulled out of context in the, in the Bible. If you get taught something consistently uh, over and over and over again, it becomes a part of your belief system. So if you are taught for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God all of your whole life, you connect with a sin consciousness. It's an automatic thing just because of the way you have been taught. So, let me just go back and, and just try to wash that thing out so I can give you an idea of what righteousness really means. So I'm going to read this from the New Living Translations, Romans 3. I'm going to start at 21 and I'm going to go through 26 because it's all one big paragraph. Romans 3.23 was just like a, a phrase in the middle of it that was just taken out. Okay, here we go. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. So just by the start of it, you're seeing that God had already through the law and the prophets that Moses had, the law that Moses um, received from God and then that, that were established in Leviticus and then the prophets as they came forth and, and started prophesying that a, a new way would be, um, would, would manifest, the Messiah would come. Um, this is a promise. He said, God, is, God has shown us a way to be made. And so here we go in verse 22. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? 
We are made right. That means we have been made in right standing with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes no matter who we are. No matter who we are, because we're all the same, right? Because verse 23 says, for all have sinned, we fall short of God's glorious standard. And that is very true. You, there's nothing you could have done on your own. There's no works that you could do that would give you the ability to be made right with God without going through the portal of Jesus, the door called Jesus, the way called Jesus, right? Verse 24 says, yet God with undeserved kindness declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our, for our sins. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he declares sinners to be right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Isn't that cool? Because the whole thing is all about God declaring us righteous through the sacrifice of Jesus and his shed blood on the cross. The, his, his death, burial, and resurrection his ascension, which now gives us the ability to sit in heavenly places with him and, and hang out. I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing. So here we are, righteous with God, yet the, the greater portion of people who are handing out tracts are pointing to your sin and your sin nature because all have sinned and fall short, fallen short of the glory of God. Yet, they pulled it out of context. And so people have been having faith for being sinful versus having faith for being made righteous. So today, what I'm trying to tell you is you have been made, declared righteous by God through the life giving sacrifice of Jesus Christ because of what he did for us. He basically pushed you off the tracks and took the train in your stead. You were headed down a road to death and destruction easily. I mean, you didn't have to do anything. All you had to do was be born. But because you were introduced to Jesus Christ and you said yes to him, he gave you the right and the ability to be made right with him and with God. So you can under understand that there is nothing, nothing you can do or say to stop the love of God, nor can you stop the reality uh, or... Um, yeah, no, the, the reality that you have been made right. You said yes to Jesus. You said yes to righteousness. When God looks at you, he sees the righteousness of, of God. He sees you right with him through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's almost like I tell people, he's looking at you through Jesus colored glasses. He can't take his eyes off you because you look just like Jesus to him. And you've been made right. So every time somebody comes and starts condemning you, you just got to know that's the accuser and God wouldn't do that. And the, and the next part of this, because I'm not going to get to finish all of what I'm going to talk to you about in this one session. Um, I'm going to talk about, you know, being free from condemnation. God does not condemn. God loves you. What he does is he helps you um, make uh, uh, mid course corrections, slight adjustments in your character, things that need to be changed to help you, uh, remain in alignment with righteousness. That might mean you um, you do something quickly, but then you just get right back on track. You know, it, it it's not it's not about beating you down with a whole bunch of rules and laws. It's really all about sharing His love, showing you love. And I mean, if you go up to somebody who is, uh, I mean, you look at them and you can tell they're a sinner. I mean, you know, because they're doing something sinful clearly, and it's not like they're having a hard time doing it, so they're probably used to doing it. Right now, what's more more effective to go up to somebody like that and say, you are a sinner or to say, hey, God loves you. Now, which one is, is going to work best? You know, because the reality is a sinner knows he's a sinner or she's a sinner because they know what they're doing. 
is inherently wrong. You do not have to train a baby how to tell a lie. If they're doing something that they know inside is wrong and you ask them, did you do it? They'll tell you no. It's automatic. You do not have to teach that. That's born behavior, inborn, sin nature, all packaged up in a baby. But you don't have to teach. But what you have to teach them is how to make good choices, how to make right choices through loving them, right? So it's the same way with the body of Christ and in Christendom. We, uh, we, we got off because I think we just made too, paid too much attention to Romans 3.23 without looking at the whole um, six verses from 21 to 26 and seeing that it's not about being a sinner. It's about being made righteous. So uh, in this part, I'm going to uh, tie this up right now and just jump to the next one. I'm going to do another one later this week. So you can, I can kind of continue this and finish up righteousness. Next week, we'll start talking about peace and then we'll jump on joy. So um, I pray that you are blessed by this video and I want you to have an amazing day. And remember, just meditate on the reality of your righteousness because it's real and it's yours. You don't have to be thinking about things that you did years ago because guess what? God separates sin from us as far as East is from the West. And I have never been able to make East and West meet. So I think that's a good thing. <laughs> so I pray that you're blessed. Have an amazing day. And I'll see you later on this week to continue and finish out this part on righteousness. Peace out, folks.